Be sure to check out MythVisionPodcast.com. Help MythVision grow, guys. Become a Patreon member. You guys will get early access to all of my videos when I'm done editing them. Also, it's a small community where you guys can message me your questions and talk to me in private. You guys can donate also through PayPal. Join our social media links down in the description. We have Twitter and Facebook groups. Help the community of MythVision grow. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell button so you're notified every time I do a live video and you don't miss any of my content. Like this video and comment your thoughts below because I want to know what you think about all of these things. We are myth vision ladies and gentlemen welcome back to myth vision podcast samuel zinner dr zinner is joining me again today we're going to talk about the earliest version of the resurrection with jesus was he really buried you know these narratives i've heard a lot of people say the empty tomb it's it's easy to argue why the empty tomb story is legend why even dr bart Ehrman has come to this conclusion and he's pretty conservative on taking steps towards saying something's legendary um, in in areas he hasn't already made those claims. So eventually he progressively came to the conclusion that he thought the empty tomb was actually a legend, but he had good reason to. And he argues that in his books and in his uh, he, he starts to argue that later on in his research, which he's currently at now. And Dr. Zenner is going to present an early version of Jesus's resurrection, unlike coming from an empty tomb or out of a tomb narrative. So Dr. Zinner, what was it that you were like that you were wanting to present? I know this won't take us long to get into, but I'm interested in hearing your insight on this. Well, my, re my historical reconstruction is that the earliest uh, idea of Jesus' resurrection was that he, his spirit or nephesh uh, ascended uh, from his body on the cross. While he was on the cross, he ascended into heaven. Uh, uh, I'm not the first scholar who come up with this. So this is a, a, an opinion, an interpretation that's in the, in the literature, the scholarly literature uh, that interprets the New Testament, the Gospels, a uh, letter to the Hebrews. Raymond Brown, in uh, his uh, the commentary on the Gospel of John and the Anchor series, Anchor Bible commentary series, right? points out that the letter to the Hebrews even seems to presuppose that, that uh, the, the original idea of Jesus' resurrection was that his spirit ascended from the body on the cross. So that is the resurrection, that is the ascension. Now what happened was uh, the role of the liturgy uh, comes into play and starts, starts to exert influence after this. And what I mean by this is right, the liturgy is right, it's a calendar. Right. So there's a Tanakh trope after three days. And what this means is not literally after three days, but at the decisive moment, at, in the, at the decisive time, God intervenes, right? And saves the situation, right? So when you say uh, he rose after three days, originally that didn't actually mean after three literal days. It meant at the decisive moment, God intervened, right? And that was on the cross itself. Right. And only later was the three-day Tanakh motif then historicized under the influence of liturgy, I believe. Right. And so then now we have the story that right after three days, uh, he, 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 the resurrection takes place. And then he's around for 40 days teaching, and then he ascends to heaven. And originally, that ascension was from the cross. So even the 40 days later, that looks like another historicization that has taken place uh, according to the needs of liturgy and the calendar of the liturgy. And if you look at the Gospel of Matthew, for instance, uh, you have the, the resurrection uh, is announced and then Jesus appears and he says, look, I am with you all days even to the consummation of the age or the end of the world. And period. That's the end of the gospel. So there is no ascent. Jesus remains in spirit here on the world till the end of the age. Right? And uh, the, the gospel of Mark and the gospel of Luke are, uh, actually present the same picture that the, the resurrection day, which already then is three days after the crucifixion, but the resurrection uh, is the, uh, coincides with the ascension. So, right, um, Mark, Matthew, Luke, there is no f ascension 40 days after. That only comes in the book of Acts. Right? And even in the Gospel of John, Jesus uh, 
uh, arises, right? And that's his ascent to God. There is no ascension 40 days later. So, uh, but in the beginning, the uh, resurrection was the ascent of Jesus from the cross. And so this is the earliest idea. Then it becomes historicized, uh, I think, for the needs of uh, liturgy. Interesting. It is interesting. Yes. It makes me think of Paul and Paul in First Corinthians 15 does have a spiritual resurrection in mind. Uh, the body dies, the spirit rises. Mm -hmm. And then this is when this huge question comes up, like what happened in Jesus body? Um, and they act like it matters in the Gospels. Like they seem like, where's the body of our Lord? Like that matters where his body is. I think it's interesting. And I just I don't know if this matters or not, but I think it's in John. It's definitely not in Mark, I don't think, but that they have this like excuse that they wanted to, like they say, um, people would steal away the body, the, the idea that they're going to take away his body. So they have this like missing tomb narrative that plays a role. Um, I don't necessarily buy that there was ever even a roll of a tomb uh like especially not one where you roll a stone in front of it if there was a historical jesus but um do you have any idea what you think happened to his body is there any evidence that might point us in a direction or is this complete speculation at this point i think it's speculation all we can say is uh you know what happened to people who were crucified in general at that time that's all. And what saying. happened? Uh, many times the body uh, was left on the on the cross, right, uh, and eaten, right, by the carry on by birds, right. So we have many records of that. Um, then we know that uh, shallow graves uh, were used, right, and these would likely been uh, made, uh, created uh, near the, the site of the, whatever crucifixion we'd be talking about. And you would, you know, that you, you wouldn't want to go out of your way, right, as, as the Romans who were doing this execution, you know, and, and travel great distances, right, and bury them somewhere, you know, you would bury them in the vicinity, right, in some shallow grave or even ditch, right? Uh, curiously, in one of the, the Nag Hammadi documents, the, the Apocryphon of James, there's actually, uh, and uh, Jesus is speaking, of course, it's you know, not historical, but, you know, Jesus is supposed to be speaking, and he actually does refer to himself as having been, I believe, I can't remember the exact words, but it, it gives the impression of, you know, a burial almost in a ditch, right? Um, anyway, that's something I have to look up. I haven't looked at that for years. But Where was this at again? Look at the Apocryphon of James in the Nagamadi Library. Read through the entire okay. document. And when you come across this statement, you will not be able to miss it. It'll stand out because it's pretty unique in early Christian literature, a claim like this, uh, that it doesn't uh, have uh, a tomb in view. Right, so that it's it's very odd. Uh, it really fits the profile of what we know did happen to the people who were crucified. Right? Have you ever heard uh, of the case? We can't grave? know. But the what? Have you ever heard of the the sinner's grave? Uh, no. I'd have to send you the link. I'd like to get your thoughts on it sometime, but uh, that's irrelevant to this right now. Maybe we could do a discussion on this. I know that you know there were different fields that we read about, different fields that were used for like burying the poor, you know, in mass graves, right? And so th this would be very similar to something that would happen, right, uh, with with uh, crucifixions. But we do have accounts. Uh, it was not unheard of. We, we read about these, not in Josephus and other sources where uh, sometimes, you know, families were able to retrieve the body, right, and, and bury them. And we know that, right, uh, from archaeology, we do have the remains of a crucified uh, Jew from the first century of the Common Era, 
And the, the nail, we know he's crucified because the nail is still in his ankle. Uh, so obviously they were able to retrieve the body. Uh, it didn't happen very often because that's the only instance we've ever uh, stumbled upon. Right? So it was extraordinarily rare. So, but, but you know, things like that did ha apparently, it obviously happen. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Interesting, Dr. Zinner. I appreciate you making this uh, remark on the original ascension and resurrection of Jesus, that the ideas he did from the cross, it was not a burial in a tomb necessarily. Uh, this might be one of the earlier forms of the resurrection that you can think of. And uh, I really do appreciate that, guys. Any comments well, you'd like to make was, before we go? Yeah, what was done with the body uh, would not have been a great concern for the earliest followers of Jesus because of the concept of the spiritual resurrection that you read of like in Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. Right? And I think that was probably the idea in Palestine and Israel as well, right? So the, uh, the important thing is that the spirit lived on, and it lived on, uh, and uh, you know, what happened to the body would not have been a great concern, theological. Of course, for, for a grieving family, sure, it would have been a, a big issue. Theologically, uh, re not really. You know, it wasn't for Paul. Right, exactly. Well, thank you so much. Guys, go down there, check out the link in the description, and you guys can help support, read what he does. You can support him, and I uh, appreciate you checking it out. And thank you so much for joining me today, Do Dr. Zinner. I appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. And don't forget, we are Mythvision.